Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for this workers retreat. We praise your name for all the things you've taught us through our state overseers and also the things we'll share together yesterday and what we're going to share this morning. Father, we're asking that all these words you are planting in our hearts will bear fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. That by all these preparations you are making in our lives, the impact you are making in our lives, and the things you are teaching us and depositing in our spirits, that we'll be able to do this work acceptably, effectually in your sight in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless us this morning again. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Before the last message, I want to go over with you the precepts for workers and ministers. And I want you to open to your, the second page of your program outline. Precepts for workers and ministers. Open to the second page of your program outline. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. From the beginning of the Deeper Life Bible Church and from the beginning of the Deeper Christian Life Ministry, we have dedicated ourselves to doing the work of the Lord the way the Lord wants it. The Deeper Christian Life Ministry is not established as a ministry or as a church to preach just a particular doctrine. There are some churches that dedicate themselves to preaching just one doctrine. Some churches are dedicated to just speaking in tongues. Deeper life is not like that. Some churches are raised up just for healing the sick, not deeper life. Some churches are raised up only to preach holiness, not deeper life. We have taken the words of Jesus Christ very seriously, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And he told us to do that until the end of the world. So it's not just for a period, but it's continually until he comes. That means then, as Jesus spoke about repentance, every minister, every worker in deeper life must have experienced it and must be preaching it. As Jesus spoke about restitution, that if you have anything, or if your brother has anything against you, you bring your gift to the altar, you leave your gift there at the altar and go back to him. Make right your ways. Then come back and offer your gift. And as he taught on holiness, the pure in heart shall see the Lord. Talked of the power of the Holy Ghost. Talked about his second coming. Talked, talked about healing. Talked about marriage. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever the Lord has commanded you. There are times when some pastors they want the church to grow and all they talk about is healing they come together on Monday they talk on healing on Tuesday they talk on healing on Thursday they talk on healing or the choir they talk on healing or the workers they talk on healing with uh, miracle revival hour they talk on healing on Sunday they talk on healing casting out devils speaking in tongues power of the Spirit, gifts of the Spirit. And that's not everything Jesus commanded. That's a small portion of what Jesus commanded. And in such assemblies called deeper life, you have a crowd coming. All they are coming for, they want to be healed. No restitution again. No repentance again. No holiness again. They do not know what it means to overcome temptation. They do not know what it means to stand in persecution. And yet Jesus said, rejoice when they speak evil of you. When they persecute you, the pastor is no more teaching that. And he's take, giving out handbills and saying, come for your miracle. Come for your miracle. Come for your miracle. Every time now, it's just coming for miracle. 
you'll be disappointed when you get to heaven that Jesus will tell you, depart from me. Because you are not a wise man, a wise woman. You did not build your house or the church on the solid foundation of the word of God. He said, all power and authority has been given to me. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. To start with, how many of you have not been baptized in water? Can I see your hand up? You have not been baptized in water since you became a believer, since you repented. You have not been baptized in water by immersion. Can you raise up your hand? Quickly, don't waste time. Can you stand up? You have been born again, but you are not baptized in water. Can you just stand up wherever you are? Now, all those of you that are standing up, the pastors of the churches you come from, they are not obeying God. They are not obeying Christ. He said, go ye into all the world. Make disciples of all nations. The moment they become disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And if there are churches, deeper life churches, where even workers, they are not baptized in water yet. Not only that, the people that remain back at home, members of the choir, not baptized in water yet. Ushers, not baptized in water yet. House fellowship leaders, not baptized in water yet. And members of the church who say they are born again, they are not baptized in water yet. Those pastors are not obeying Christ. They're doing their own will. They're preaching what they want to preach. All they want is healing. All they want is miracle. And you who have read the Bible, who say that you are teaching your workers, you have read it in the Bible, you have not gone to your pastor, baptize me in water, I am born again, you are not complete in Christ. You can sit down. This church is dedicated to preaching the whole counsel of God. Paul the Apostle said, I have gone publicly and I've gone from house to house declaring unto you faith, repentance and faith in Christ and I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. So then, as we go, we're not like people that are rising up and that are saying, now, here they are, just come, just come. God will prosper you, God will bless you, God will heal you, God will give you miracle. It's not just a church for miracles. It's a Bible church. Listen to that name. Deeper Life Bible Church. Why do you call it deeper? Because all the other people remain on the surface. They don't want to go deep. They don't want sanctification. They think that to go deep, deep, deep into their heart. They don't want it. All they want is, come to Jesus, he'll bless you. Come to Jesus, he'll make you happy. Come to Jesus, he'll make you laugh. Come to Jesus, smile. That's all they want. But we say no. That's a deeper experience in Christ. So that's why we call it deeper. Life. We determine that we're not just going to be playing around. Doctrines alone, it must affect our lives. Between husband and wife. Between worker and boss. Our lives in the market. Our lives in the home. Our lives everywhere we are. That's why we call it deeper life. So if you're in this church, and what you're hearing is only in your head, your own is deeper head Christian ministry. It's only affecting your activity. Your own is deeper Christian activity. Your own is not life. It doesn't show in your life. It doesn't show in your behavior. It doesn't show in your action. You just go about with activity, with evangelism. Some people, all they preach is evangelism. Evangelism. Bring people in. Bring people in. Bring people in. No, it's deeper life. It must affect your very life. Your marriage. That's your life. Your 
word, honesty. You don't steal. You don't lie. You don't forge accounts. You don't borrow money from people and refuse to pay back. You don't steal church money. You don't steal a biro from even an office. It affects your life. And everybody that sees you, they will know. Whosoever is in Christ is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things are become new. We don't have an association here. Association of businessmen. IFL people. Distributing cars. I belong to deeper life. How has it affected your life? You're still beating your wife. You say you are IFL. You're not paid the people you employ. You cheat them. And instead of paying them, you just use their services free. You say there is no money. There is no money. There is no money you are paying house rent. There is no money you are IFL. There is no money you are employing people. There is no money that you yourself, you are buying car. You are buying clothes. And the people that are working for you, you are not paying them. You are not a member of the church. You are just one of these people that came for bread and butter. Jesus told Nicodemus, an IFL person, ye must be born again. Because except you, Nicodemus, except you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And if there are pastors say that, saying that they are deeper like Bible church, calling IFL people together, saying, just come, we need you. What do you need them for? We don't need them. It's God that is calling them. Deeper life does not need a single IFL person. It's God that is calling them so that they will not perish. Not so that they will bring their cars to the church, bring their money to the church, bring their personality to the church, so that when they come, they will hear the word of repentance. And they will go on their knees. IFL members, if you are not able to go on your knees, you are not obeying the Lord. If you are here like they are in the other church over there, in the other church over there, in the other church over there, and you will sit on the high bench and say, we are the great people of this church, you missed road. Because this is a church that will preach the gospel without favor, without fear that will tell people that God is not willing that anybody should perish. That's why we called you. We can make a lot of programs. But those programs are to bring you to the Lord. Bring you to the Lord. And if we didn't tell you that without holiness, no IFL person will see the Lord. If we don't tell you that, we're cheating you. We're just collecting your money for tithe and offerings. We're just collecting your money for buying church car, church vehicle, just to take your money and throw you to hell because it's either holiness or hell. You don't have holiness, it's hell. And we wouldn't deceive anybody. Just take his money, make use of his services, and then allow him to be fighting with his wife Allow him to have one wife at home and go and marry another person again and say, well, after all, it's high affair. Let us be patient with them. No, we discipline them. Anybody in deeper life, Bible, church, pastor or priest, brother or sister, IFL or ordinary, if he commits sin, the Bible says, rebuke them sharply. And Jesus said that you must teach all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And all those of you preachers who are backsliding, that you cannot rebuke sin. You cannot correct backsliders. You cannot teach what Christ has commanded. I pity you. Because if Jesus comes, number one, your works will be burnt in fire. Number two, if you have compromised with sin, not contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints. When it comes, you are lost forever. As a backslider. As a person that is looking for money, not looking for souls. So, the number one precept is this. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Since when did you teach on the rapture? All things. 
Since when did you teach on restitution? Are you teaching all things? Since when did you teach on one man, one wife? And that if somebody has married two wives, three wives, when it comes to the Lord, he makes restitution. You say, if I preach that now, the people that are just coming and coming and coming, they will run away. Let them run away. Not everybody will be converted. Not the whole world will go to heaven. Some will go to heaven. Some will go to hell. Now which crowd are you collecting together? Crowd for attendance. We have 3,000 in our church. And so what? How many of those 3,000 are in the book of life? The people that are beating their wives. The people that are still smuggling, don't you know them? The people that are cheating, don't you know them? 3,000 in the church. The people that don't know how to pray, ask them if you are born again, raise up your hand, they raise up their hands. Then, immediately you tell them to raise up their hands if they are born again, they raise up their hands. Then, say, now, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you are not sure you are having victory over sin, and you really want to give your life to Jesus Christ, raise up your hand. You know those who raise up their hands? Those who raise up their hands are the first, they raise up their hands again. Those are the 3,000 that you collect in your churches. And you say, we're a growing church. God have mercy on you. When you get to heaven, and God begins to judge, you will say, our general superintendent told us, we won't deceive people. I won't deceive people. Yeah, it's possible to even be a worker and not be born again. Because whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. He cannot sin. For the seed of God remains in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. In days are the children of God manifest, and the children of the devil. He that doeth righteousness is of God, little children. But he that doeth not righteousness is not of God. And we have heard that he that is born of God loveth his brother, not as Cain who hated and killed his brother because his works were evil. And therefore, if you are children of God, this is a victory, the faith that overcomes the world, if you are born again. And there are workers that are repenting every night. God, I told the lie in the afternoon again, forgive me. Worker, if Jesus comes and meets you in that condition, You'll be a worker at the time of the tribulation. You'll be preaching to the people that are suffering a tribulation. It takes the overcomer to go when he comes. Living above sin. Living above sin. Workers that are fighting. Workers that have bitterness. Workers that hate their pastor. Workers that gossip. And they say they are workers. And they say, praise God, I'm deeper life worker. As if that is a title and ticket for heaven. You don't remember Judas Iscariot. He was worker, treasurer, secretary. He perished. Don't you remember that Absalom was David's son? He perished. Don't you remember Esau, son of Abraham, son of Isaac? Was he a believer? I am deeper life. Does it affect your life? Deeper life Bible church. It's deeper. It's different from all these other people. Life, it affects your life. It's a Bible church. Not just gospel. They say gospel church. Just preach Matthew. Just preach Mark. Just preach John chapter 3 verse 16. Gospel church. No, 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 no. Bible church. From Genesis on to Revelation. Everything. Completely. That's why you will see your study scripture. We go from chapter to chapter. We go from doctrine to doctrine. Everything. We don't try to avoid 
something. And when you, I hope when you ask your teachers or your pastors questions in your own church, deeper life, I hope that uh, the pastor doesn't say, well, I don't know the answer to that question, but it's not important anyway. All that is important is what we read in uh, Acts chapter 1 verse 6. You shall receive power. Any other thing you don't understand, forget it. It's not important. No, it's a Bible church. You must study and explain it to them. Why did this happen in the Bible? Stand up as teacher and explain it to them. It's a Bible church. It's not just the gospel of uh, John chapter 3 verse 16 church. Everything. Honestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints. And let me ask you, is that what you are contending for? Or what you are carrying about is just be born again, be born again, be born again. No sanctification. No Holy Ghost baptism. Deeper life is not a tongue speaking church. What do I mean by that? We believe in speaking in tongues. But some people, and I've seen some of you like that here. If I preach on restitution, you stand up, you begin to speak in tongues. That's foolish. If I preach on consecration, instead of praying and saying, Lord, I offer myself upon the altar, I give myself completely, you, begin, you rise up, you begin to talk in tongues. That's foolish. If I talk on sanctification, and I say your heart must be purified, you stand up, you begin to speak in tongues. If we talk on healing, you speak in tongues. If we talk on rapture, you speak in tongues. Anything that we talk about, we say, now rise up and let us pray. You never pray with your understanding again. Paul the Apostle said, I'll pray with my understanding and I'll pray in the Spirit. Both. Not that every time we come to church, every time we have quiet time, instead of having your quiet time and learning from the Word of God, you never learn again. All now is just tongues, 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 tongues. From Portacult. From Calabar. Maybe there are some people from Oweri here like that. You bought all these books of Charles Capps and Kenneth Higgin and Copeland and everybody. And then you feel that the only thing on the world, in the world is speak in tongues. If your preachers here, those who are sitting here, if they tell you that, they are deceiving you. Balance it all. That you understand that it is not just speaking in tongues when your life is dirty. It's not just speaking in tongues when you ought to make restitution. It's not just speaking in tongues when you are tearing apart the church and then you hear the message of the word of God. And instead of with tears and crying, speaking with your own voice, your own language, going to God and praying with your understanding to consecrate. You don't do that. And it's all just speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues. You'll be disappointed on the last day. The Corinthians, there were the people in the New Testament that spoke in tongues more than everybody else. It was among them most people died. You know why? All they did was just speaking in tongues. But they were eating the Lord's Supper unworthily. They were not living right. They had problems on marriage. They had problems even with idolatry, with idol worship. They had problems with almost everything you can think about. And there was disunity in that church. And Paul the Apostle told them, Oh, you Corinthians, I cannot speak unto you as unto the spiritual. I thought speaking in tongues makes us spiritual. No, you know you are not spiritual. Because you speak in tongues and you get angry. You speak in tongues and there are people you cannot forgive. You speak in tongues and yet you cannot control your body. You say, well, this temptation after women is always bothering me. And yet you are speaking in tongues. You are like the Corinthian church. You are not solid. You are not firm. You are not steadfast. All you know is just shake a little and jerk a little and speak in tongues. That's all. And after the speaking in tongues, the evil thoughts are coming back again. What is the sanctification? Two sisters speaking in tongues in the same house, they cannot live together. They cannot sweep the, uh, the, the floor of the place they are living together, only speaking in tongues. You open the Bible, you read, you don't understand. While you are having quiet time, 
you sleep. When you sleep, you are quiet. And when you wake up, you begin to rattle out in tongues. Who are you deceiving, by the way? The devil is oppressing you and tormenting you and driving you apart. You don't have victory over sin. You don't have victory over evil thoughts. You don't have victory in your language, in your conversation. You exaggerate, you lie, you talk too much. There's no control, no self-control. The fruits of the Spirit are not there. And yet speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues. Who taught you that? You heard that from me before? Never. Is deeper life Bible church. The whole Bible. Not just speaking in tongues. The whole Bible. Not just healing. The whole Bible. Not just miracle. There are people now today in deeper life that say miracle, miracle, miracle. What's mir- what do you know? What do they call miracle? The greatest miracle is being born again. And they don't have that miracle. All they are having, they come. I praise God. I came last Friday. I didn't have uh, any five cobble on me. And when I was going out, God gave me five naira. And so watch my friend go and sit down. Five naira. God gave you five naira. I got a miracle. Five naira is a miracle. Uh, when I came last Friday, before I came, I was going to toilet, and uh, then I came. They mentioned my problem, and after that Friday meeting, I didn't go to toilet again. Praise God, I have a miracle. Go and sit down. He didn't go to toilet again. Still smoking and drinking. It's got miracle. His life is not changed. Got miracle. Still beating his wife, got miracle. Still stealing in his place of work, he's got miracle. Tell them to sit down, let's preach salvation to them. That ye must be born again. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. When Zacchaeus came and he said, Half of my good I give to the poor. And if I've taken anything wrongfully by wrong accusation from any man, I restore it fourfold. That's a miracle. When that time robber, when he changes... And he gives himself and he says, Lord, all that I've stolen, I'll restore everything. That's a miracle. But the covetous people, they come and they get more money. That's no miracle. But the people whose lives are being changed, the people who are giving themselves to the Lord, saying, Oh Lord, here am I. I lay all on the altar. I consecrate everything. The people that will say, as members of the church, here I am. I'm a member of this body of Christ. I don't care for persecution. Though he kills me, yet I will trust him. That's a miracle. People that will rise up like Esther. If I perish, I perish. If I lose all my friends, I lose all my friends. If people hate me, that's all right. What I will do for the rest of my life is obeying the Lord in every detail of the word of God. That's a miracle. But five naira. Headache. If that's all the miracle you've got, I don't think we'll meet in heaven. It's a miracle that touches the heart and touches the life. That's why we call this church Deeper Life Bible Church. The whole Bible. Therefore, as you are going out from today, go back home. Make wrong things right. And if all you have been preaching is half gospel, one quarter gospel, one tenth gospel, preach the whole thing. Teaching them all things whatsoever I have commanded you. 